Benvenuti a tutti. This is Dave Anthony Settitucati. Tonight, we're going to meet three of our Solaro Lodge members. They're great people, wonderful friends, and we're lucky to have them in our lodge. First, we'll meet Bob Graham, a man who has devoted so much of his time and talent to the lodge. He has a brilliant mind and a very generous heart. Then, we'll meet Kathy Rocca, a very caring and dedicated lodge member who is always there when something needs to be done. Finally, lodge brother Rocco Locasano will show us how to make his delicious pignoli cookies. It's no wonder that Rocco is a very popular guy when he brings his treats to any gathering. So sit back and I hope you enjoy meeting these three wonderful friends of mine from the Solaro Lodge. My name is Bob Graham and I've been a member of the Dr. Vincenzo Solero Lodge for approximately 13 years. I came to live in America, obviously from England. Uh, I took a job with a company that produced uh, printing equipment throughout the world and I had a choice of countries to go to and uh, fortunately I chose the United States of America. Uh, being English and uh, blind to the sons of Italy is never been a problem at all. Uh, anybody of any race can become a member so long as your spouse, either husband or wife, is of Italian heritage. I guess I really became connected to Italy a long time before I came to the United States. In my 20s, uh, we used to take frequent trips down to Italy on vacations and uh, later on as we got older and we had better cars, we used to drive from England to Italy for a couple of weeks and you know have a good time on the beach uh, and uh, we spread our wings and traveled all over Europe in the end but basically I used to love Italy because of what it was Italian, the food, the wine, the beaches and uh, it was always my favorite place to go. I think my attraction to Italy and Italian culture began when the Italians they I like just like the way that they leave things uh, all historical buildings are all left in place they don't destroy anything that's historical and in fact I believe it's illegal to destroy uh, Italian artifacts and buildings if you find them in the backyard of your house or whatever and I just like the way they what is it the word I guess it's they treasure the historical things that they have and obviously they take care of them and they will keep them forever uh, I got involved in the Sons of Italy obviously because of my wife she was doing a research project and uh, we both joined and we both joined and enjoyed ourselves ever since. I've been a trustee, I've been a financial secretary, a corresponding secretary, a sentinel and currently I am a commissioner of the Garibaldi Mucci Museum on Staten Island. I think the motivation that comes with being a in a position or a officer of the Sons of Italy and the Lodge is the fact that it does so much good work, it does a lot of charitable work and it's just meeting nice people, good people that uh, are interested in the same values and Italian heritage that uh, my wife and I are. Looking back at the projects that I have done for the Sons of Italy, I think my favourite three are that the fact that we do the monthly newsletter for the Dr. Vincenzo Solero Lodge and I put together our yearly journal that raises money for our charitable endeavours, plus being a commissioner of the Garibaldi Meucci Museum on Staten Island. Another enjoyable thing that I've done with the uh, Sons of Italy and our lodges, I'm kind of an amateur photographer so I take photographs at a lot of our functions and I've also been asked to take some photographs at one or two state functions and I also made a uh, photo video of items and the history of the uh, Garibaldi Meucci Museum on Staten Island. One of the other ventures that I took on at the uh, lodge is that over the period of years we've actually computerized everything and so it's no longer having six people sitting down handwriting newsletters to be mailed and sending out handwritten at membership renewals so now we do all that using a computer and it's speeded everything up and uh, saved a lot of time in addition now I do the journal we do not have to pay for somebody else to do all the typesetting and all we have to pay for that comes out of the charitable money is just the printing costs. My favourite activities at the Dr. Vincenzo Cerro Lodge are that we do breakfast for the residents of Siena Village once a year, 
We also do carol, Christmas caroling for the residents of Siena Village once a year and I certainly enjoy Carnivale which is a big event that we have at the lodge and lastly it is uh, Ferragosto which is held at uh, Arthur Avenue in the Bronx. When it comes to being a member of Osaya and the Sons of Italy I probably put in between 10 to 12 hours a week on our own lodge items and events and of course when I go to the museum it's usually a one day every two weeks and it probably takes me all day to get there, spend an afternoon there and come home. So I probably spend, you know, probably 10 hours a week working on Sons of Italy functions, events or, you know, items. I think the Sons of Italy is probably one of the best organisations in America. It's uh, purely a fraternal and a charitable organization. It does so much good for so many people. Uh, it's a very good promoter of Italian heritage and culture which must never be lost. I think if somebody asked me why they should join the uh, Order Sons of Italy, I think I would say that it's uh, a good place to continue with your Italian heritage and being able to do some good charitable work for some very good organizations. My feeling about the Italians and the Italian heritage is that it's something that I've learned while I've been in America for the last 42 years. I come from a country where the heritage and the culture is completely different. The family values are very different to what they are in an Italian family and I've learned to you know, respect and enjoy those family values and uh, good Italian cooking. Hi, uh, this is Kathy Rocco. I've um, been married for 28 years to my husband, John. I have two children, Caitlin and Blake. Uh, Caitlin is 23 and Blake is 20. Um, I've lived in Smithtown for 18 years. Before that, we were from Queens. Um, nine years ago, a friend of ours, who belonged to the Solero Lodge, asked if we were interested in joining. So he said that this would be a great organization to socialize, to meet a lot of new people, and to make new friends, and that's what we did. Um, I started out, that same friend who got me to join also got me to become an officer. Um, he convinced me that I should become the recording secretary, uh, which I was for two years, and then um, I became the treasurer, but only for one year, and then second vice president also for one year, and right now I'm the first vice president and in two years I will be president. I have learned so much about Italian culture. I personally am not Italian. My husband is um, and now I feel, I feel like I am Italian by association because I have been involved in many of the functions and learning the different um, aspects of Italy. Uh, my children both studied in Italy for a semester I think that what I admire most about the Italian culture is the, the camaraderie, the sense of family, the traditions, uh, the food, <laughs> of course, <laughs> but I enjoy pretty much everything. I mean, the, the areas are beautiful, uh, the region is beautiful. I recently helped out with the, um, the costumes, making the costumes of Italy, and also modeling the costumes of Italy and to see all those beautiful outfits, it, it was wonderful. Well, in the future, um, I will be president in, in two years. Um, right now, I'm also in charge of membership, so I get to meet all of the new members even before they get to the lodge and, and try and, and show them what we are about and how much fun and uh, interesting things that we do. The direction I would like the lodge to take in the future is to um, welcome everyone, welcome uh, not only Italian, but to bring the Italian culture to other people, I think is very important because there's so many people out there who don't know the traditions or even the, the wonderful foods and, and different things that we do. It would be great if we could share that with them. It's important for me to be a member in this lodge I've made because I've made so many wonderful friends and and I laugh with so many people you cry with some people when they're going through their hard times but to have that camaraderie it's so important 
and you, it's very hard to find um, in other places that I've joined. I've been in Girl Scouts, I've been in Cub Scouts, I've been a religion teacher at St. Pat's. All of those things are wonderful, but the, the camaraderie that you have in, in the Sons of Italy is amazing. Right now my ties to Italy are uh, my husband, who is half Italian. His, uh, I believe, grandparents came from Genoa in Liguria. Um, and my children uh, studied Italian since seventh grade. My daughter graduated last year from Stony Brook and my son is going to be a senior next year in Binghamton and his major is Italian and he actually just got back from Italy because he was studying in Florence for the semester. You do not have to be Italian to be a member of the Lodge. Case in point, I am not Italian. Um, you, you can be married to a, an Italian or um, you can also be a social member where you don't have to be Italian at all. Um, the only difference is that you cannot vote if you're a social member. So a little bit about what we do at our meetings. Um, we begin uh, with a prayer and we also um, have a very important two people who's, who sing the American National Anthem and the Italian National Anthem. And we also um, have a moment of silence for those that have departed and are in harm's way. We begin our meetings that way every single time. We go through any committee reports, uh, treasury reports. Um, we get to a point where we tell about all the activities that are coming up um, that people can volunteer for or participate in. Um, and then we have what is called the good of, and welfare, which is where anybody who would like to say anything can. Um, and there are many times when it's well wishes. Uh, we also have sunshine. We do a sunshine where we tell if, if you, we need to be thinking about or praying for people who are not doing so well in our lodge. And then afterwards, we have a social time where we have uh, a lot of homemade uh, cakes and cookies and coffee and tea. The activities that we do during the year, uh, we, we pretty much try and do something every month. Uh, we have a, um, an, an installation month where we install our new board and we have a, a lovely dinner before the installation. Uh, we have Carnival, usually in February, where people um, dress up or don't have to dress up. The whole hall is decorated for Carnival. It's a very festive, festive time. Uh, we have a, a picnic, usually in July um, or August. In September, we go to um, Arthur Avenue in the Bronx to Ferragosto, and there are many um, vendors along the streets. There are people singing. There are people performing on the side streets. There's uh, many. They roast a pig on the side. They have so many things going on. Uh, in October, um, we actually march in two parades. We march in a parade in uh, New York City. Um, the Columbus Day Parade in New York City, and we also march in the Huntington Parade um, on Main Street, Huntington. And it's so lovely to see all the people on the sidelines with the Ital Italian spirit. We also have um, one of our members, um, Ziggy, who, ha who supplies all these characters, dressed up characters. He has Mickey Mouse, he has so many, and he um, brings them to the parades. It's lovely. Um, in December, we have a lovely Christmas party. We usually go to a local restaurant, pretty much take up half of their half of their restaurant. Uh, we have the uh, Seto Ducatis um, performing for us and keeping us entertained, and we have sing-alongs, uh, we have grab bags, and just to get everybody together in such a festive atmosphere, it's lovely. And that's, there are a few others I'm probably skipping over. Um, we had the other night a Night at the Races, which is usually run by one of our members, Nick, and he always puts his heart into it, and, and everybody has a lovely time and pretending that their horse is going down the track. Uh, we also have a wonderful variety show every year, which brings together so much talent. We have a lot of talent in our lodge. We have um, singers, dancers, uh, and this year it's called Billboard 100, and it's on July 17th. Uh, we also have a month of the month of October. We do a Heritage Month, where um, we bring 
local things to the library pretty much every week. We have speakers, we have singers from our lodge, and we have the uh, Medal of Honor display. This is a display of men um, who were in the service who earned the Medal of Honor. It gives a little history of them and what they achieved. As a member of the Sons of Italy, you are also in a fraternity and you can go to any lodge in our area or in the country and be accepted as part of the family. Um, I have gone to many things at different lodges. I've gone to um, Sunday with Mama uh, where they uh, have lots of food, lots of raffles, lots of fun. I've gone to dances at different lodges. I've, done, I've also gone to their installations and seen what they do and to compare so we can see how we can better ourselves. Um, but you are welcome in any lodge in whatever they are doing. I've gone to lodges where they show a movie um, and have popcorn and just to be around people that you get to know and become part of your family. I've met so many people and had such a lot of fun with so many fun things that we do. And I'm very happy I'm a member. My name is Rocco Lacassano. I want to show you today how you make pignoli cookies. The first thing you have to do is you have to start the day before your baking and make this wonderful batter. You have to dice up your almond paste with the sugar and all the other ingredients into the mixer and mix it up. Then you take this bowl and you put it in the refrigerator overnight. After it's the batter is in the refrigerator overnight before baking, two hours you put it in the freezer to give it a little consistency for when you're baking. That is the start. Now we will go to making pignoni. First thing you're going to do is take your scoop. You're going to scoop some of the batter and put it on your on your tray. This is why you put it in the freezer because it gets a nice consistency. And your cookies to come out perfect. This has been working for me. I got this recipe from a young lady from one of the other lodges. This is the only recipe that I know that works. The consistency is not right. It'll be very soupy, and you're gonna have one large pignoli cookie. Now you just keep putting your batter on the parchment paper. Then you don't put them too close because they do spread. Not much, but they spread. Now that they're all on the tray, you take the pignoli cookies and you put them on top. Most people roll this. I don't roll it, I don't like, like it sticking to my hands. Because it's a very sticky consistency to the batter. When you're putting the, and the only cookies, 
The dolly's on the cookies. You want to push down a little bit so that when they do depress a little bit, they're going to come out nice and round. It's a very tedious job. It doesn't go fast. And you have to be very careful when you're baking these. If you leave them too long, they're like sugar cookies. They will burn. You cannot, you cannot turn your head. Next, after the pinoles are on, you brush the top of the cookies with egg white. Like I say, it's a long, tedious job. It's all going to how many cookies you want to make. What I'm making today, I made up three pounds of almond paste. To make the batter for the pinole cookies, you start with one pound of almond paste. One and a half cups of sugar and you blend that together. After that is fairly blended t together you start adding the egg whites. Once all the egg whites and everything and it's all blended you put one teaspoon of almond extract do not put too much egg whites because you want the consistency of the batter to be nice and tight. If you put too much egg whites, it's going to make it very liquidy. If that happens, just add some more almond paste. If, if you're going to make a lot of Pinoli cookies. Your best bet is to buy your almond paste from the restaurant depot. Same with your pinolis. The almond paste is not cheap. It comes in a seven pound can. It costs somewhere between thirty five and forty dollars. Now if you want to buy the pinolis from the restaurant depot, they only sell them in a three pound bag. Again, they are very, very expensive. A three pound bag can cost you in the neighborhood of 45 to 50 dollars. Pinoli cookies, that's why when you go to the bakery, they cost so much money. It's because the ingredients cost a lot of money. Okay, here we go. Now it's time to check the cookies. Oh, they're coming nice. They look good. They puffed up nice. They're a nice, nice size. Oh yeah, very, very nice. Another 
five or ten minutes that we'll be able to take them out. The Centipede Convention is held once a year at the Villa Roma. We have anywhere in the neighborhood of 375 to 400 delegates from all over New York State who come to the convention to vote on the rules and all the different things that are going to come up during the year for the organization. It's a very nice convention. We also elect a new council every two years. This year will be a, a new council will be coming in. The old state president reign is over and the new president will take over on Saturday night. But it's very enjoyable. And you make a lot of new friends. There's always somebody there that either knows the town your parents came from. It's, it's just a beautiful four days. All right, here we go. The cookies are ready to come out. Here we are. 24 beautiful cookies. And if they taste as good as they look. Well, here we are. They're out of the oven. Now we'll see if what we made tastes as good as it looks. Mmm. Simply delicious. Couldn't be any better. Bon appetit.